Now, next task number two with the domain ID. So we're now going to change the OSPF domain ID on R1 to 1111, and then observe the changes to the R6 and R7 OSPF routes. Okay, so right, like I mentioned previously, that the domain ID by default is the same as the process ID. So currently, all of our routers, or the PE routers in, in particular, is running off a domain ID one. So now, what we're going to do is to get onto router R1 and change their domain ID. So router OSPF1, okay, specifically under VRFC1. Next, we're going to change out domain ID. And in the IP address format, we're going to do 1111 for R1. Enter. Okay, and now we're going to see what effect that has on the route coming across being seen by R2. So on R2, we can just show, actually, let me just do up arrow, looking at the same route for 6600. You can see previously right here, domain ID was one. Looks like it doesn't take effect quite yet. So maybe let's try to look at the source first, which is the R1. So VPN V4. You see right here, the domain ID has changed already. On the R1 side, let's see if it comes across. There you go. So it just take a couple of seconds here for that to be updated. So you can see now how the domain ID has changed from 1 to 1111. All right, and also if you do show IP OSPF database. You can see how the, let's see if we can find those, summary routes. So most of the routes right here for R6 and actually all of the routes for R6 and R8 has become a type 5 external routes instead of a summary routes. Okay, so you can see that we no longer see R6 and R8 loopbacks as part of the summary net section. And now if we go over to on this side, uh, the start of the R6 side first. So let's look at the R6. And the show IP route OSPF, you can see how, how all of these routes and those are pertaining to the R7 and switch one is coming across the OSPF and not so much of the local routes, which is R8. So you can see the R8, it's still a inter area routes, um, but the rest of the route has become a external type two or E2 routes. Okay, if you look at R7 show IP route OSPF, and we have seen pretty much the same thing with R6 and R8 being the E2 routes. Okay, and this is because when there is a mismatch in the domain ID between the source PE routers and destination PE routers where it receives their routes, those routes will get advertised to the local SPF area as the external routes. Okay, so as the routes being received on the PE router it compares the domain ID that is part of, that's came across or carried in the BGP routes itself with its own domain ID. And if there is a discrepancy, then it marks those routes as external routes. And you may not run into these a lot in real life, and this is more of a CCIE questions, I guess. So it's uh, good to know. And that's pretty much it for our task number two. But before we move on, we need to revert the OSPF domain ID back on R1. Okay, so let's go back to R1 find the command and just remove that. So all the routes once again become the inter area routes. And there you go. It just got back to uh, IA. Okay, moving on to our task number three with the sham link. Now we need to configure OSPF area 24 on the backdoor link between R6 and R7. Then we need to make sure that the R6 and R7 prefer the MPLS for communication between the leap back 10 through 12 and only use the backdoor link in the event of the MPLS has failed. And then we can use the R1, R2, loopback 10 as a source of our shame link. Okay, so let's check back with our diagram real quick. So what we're going to be configuring is our first enabling OSPF in the backdoor link right here. And then we configured a sham link between R1 and R2. Okay, so let's start off with configuration on R6. Okay, under the router OSPF1. Actually, let's do take a look at the interface. So our backdoor link is our 0, 0, 0 right here with the IP of 67.6. So we need to do no passive on the serial 0, 0. And then the network command on 16, 17, uh, 67.6. And that should be an area 24. 
Okay. Jumping over to R7. Router OSPF1. Same thing, no passive. 0, 0, 0. And then on the R7 side is dot sixty-seven dot seven area twenty-four. Okay, and here's our OSPF neighbor adjacency. And if you do show IP route OSPF, you can see that now some of these routes before it was pointing out the fast zero zero, which is towards MPLS, but now it's pointing out the serial interface, and particularly these are R6 loopback interfaces, and that's because it has received it with a route type internal. As you can see, there's no IA being marked on those routes, and by default, OSPF prefer an internal routes or intra-area routes over the inter-area routes. Okay, and that's why it's also right here, this is the subnet between R1 and R6. It's also being preferred over the backdoor serial link as well. Okay, but our tasks say that we want to make sure the R6 and R7 prefer MPLS for the communication between their loopbacks. Okay, so we need to fix this. And the way to do that is to build a sham link between the sites. So currently the R6 and R7 are preferring this backdoor link right here, just because the route is coming across as intra-area routes. What we're gonna to need to do is to build a spatial virtual link between R1 and R2, and that's to override the default behavior where the route from the MPLS or BGP are advertised as the inter-area route. So we're going to have to do a sham link to override that default behavior, which you will see in a second. Okay, and the way the sham link works, you have to build the sham link using a interface that's only known across the BGP. So we can't use the loopback 10 through 12 on R1 or R2. So we have to come up with a new interface for that and the tasks say that we can use the loopback 10 for this which is currently not being advertised from R1 or R2 and also the interface has to be part of the VRF so it's almost like a dedicated interface for the customer. So now if you go on to R1 just to show IP interface brief you can see here on R1 we also have a loopback 10 that's not being seen by the network at this point because we haven't really advertised it on R1. So we're going to have to get under the loopback 10 on R1, convert that to be a part of, or be a member of VRFC1. Let's put the IP back, 1101. And we can just make it slash 32. I believe originally we had it as slash 24. Doesn't matter. So change that. And then we have to advertise that route only through the BGP, so we cannot have this loopback or interfaces being learned through OSPF at all. Otherwise, the sham link won't work. So the way to do that is we get under the IPv4 VRF C1 on the BGP, and then we use the regular BGP network command to advertise that. So 0 0.1 mass slash 32. Okay, and then the command that enables it all is under the OSPF routing process VRFC1 and basically we're going to be build the sham link that's connected area 24 together so the sham link has to be part of the area 24 also so to do area 24 do question mark you can see right here an option to build a sham link and we have to specify the source of the link which is our loopback 10 1101 and then the destination of the link which is 2201 and just to make sure that the link is going to be preferred, you have you can also specify the cost that's lower than the cost of your backdoor link. Okay, so in this case, just going to do a cost of one. Okay, but it can be any value, just to make sure that the link looks better than the backdoor link. Okay, enter. So that's one side. Now we have to complete the opposite side, which is R2. Just to show, run interface loop back ten. So R2 also have a loopback 10, put it under the VRF C1, then IP address 2201, just going to make a slash 32, and then under router BGP you have to advertise that route, address family of PV4 VRF C1, the network command.
So if we got the mask, so network and mask. And then under router OSPF1 VRFC1, the area 24, sham link, sourcing from 0021, going towards 1101. Same thing, we do a cost of one. Okay, as you can see, as soon as I hit enter, we have a adjacency that comes up. You can see it's being marked SOSPF underscore SL for a sham link, zero. It went through loading to full. And that means we currently have a adjacency across that virtual link. Okay, so now if you do show IP or SPF neighbor, you can see in addition to the switch, ten, uh, switch one and R7, we also have an adjacency to the router one, although they're not directly connected. It just has adjacency form across that virtual link. So now if you do show IP or SPF, actually let me get out of that so you can see the option question mark right here you can look at the status of the sham link enter and currently you can see the sham link is up for the area 24 and the cost of that is one and it's uh, considered a point-to-point -point link it so has all the regular OSPF parameters just the hello for 10 second dead time is 40 Okay, and adjacency is currently in state of full adjacency. And now if you do show IP OSPF database for the area 24, we don't really see the R6 loopbacks anymore being a LSA 3. So let's try to verify that jumping back to R7. Just so we do uh, up arrow. And you can see now that the R7 is actually preferring fast Ethernet 00 to get to R6. Okay, and again, you can see that the metric has changed as well. Before, it was the metric 66 being learned across the serial link. But now that we have the sham link, which is the virtual link between the two sites, the route is coming across with the metrics of 4. Okay, and that's obviously preferred over the metrics of 66. So if you're trying to do a trace route from R7 to R6 loopback 10, it obviously prefer the MPLS routes. So it gets to first R2, then R5, R3, R1, R6. So it takes this route right here, 2, 5, 3, 1, and then 6. Okay, now just to test the failover, then that in fact, once the MPLS failed, it actually fail over to the backdoor link. On the R1, we can shut down the fast 0, 0 right here. So let's assume that that particular link has failed. So fast 0, 0, shut. Then we'll give it a second. Going back to R6, do a show IP route OSPF. Looks like it hasn't gone away yet. So there you go. Take a couple seconds for it to react. And now you can see the metrics gets changed back to 66 with this that pointing out the, for the route pointing out the serial zero zero. And now if you do a trace routes to the same R6 loop back 10, you can see it's just basically a one hop away and that's utilizing their backdoor link. Okay, so that's pretty much proves that our backdoor link is acting as a backup of our MPLS. So let me bring that back and that should complete our task number three.